Hi everyone, this is Maverick Paul, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to discuss the suggested solution for 2020 A-Levels H2 Chemistry, Paper 1, Question 18. Now, Question 18 goes something like this. Androstenolone is a steroid secreted by the adrenal cortex. The compound is given here. Molecular mass is 288. So when it is treated with coal, KMnO4, which is an oxidizing agent, it gives a compound Z, and the MR for Z is 322. So how many chiral centers does Z have? Now, we have four options A, B, C, D. Later, we want to run through these options. Now, the topic tested in this question, if we are treating a compound with coal, KMnO4, probably it is under alkenes, but we want to run through each of these function group and we want to consider which of these function groups will be affected by coal KMnO4. So we notice the function groups present in this compound that can be oxidized will be my secondary alcohol. We have an OH group here. Now secondary alcohol can be oxidized by manganate, but it requires heating. So coal KMnO4 shouldn't oxidize this secondary alcohol. So we will leave this alone. I have an alkene functional group present. We know that alkene can be oxidized by co-manganate and hot manganate. So most likely my alkene will be affected. And you notice the rest of the functional groups, they are either alkene carbon, which cannot be oxidized by manganate. And this ketone functional group is also stable to oxidation. So we cannot use manganate to oxidize ketone. Therefore, we know that we are targeting the oxidation of alkene. Now, if I consider oxidation of alkene using coal KMnO4, the idea is actually fairly straightforward. Uh, we should be familiar with this reaction. I'll get a diol. Basically, the pi bond will just open up. I'll add two OH groups to each of my carbon. And you notice there will be an increase in the number of species added to my carbon. And therefore, what we can do is we can try to consider, okay, what is the increase in the molar mass because of this addition of these two OH groups. Now each of these OH group, when I open up the pi bond and I put two OH groups to each of this carbon, each of this OH group, the MR is actually 17. So I have two of them, MR 17, when I add two OH groups. So I would expect the increase in the molar mass for whatever compound that I have that contains this alkene function group, when it undergoes mild oxidation to form my diol, I will expect the increase in the molar mass to be a plus 34 because I'm adding two OH groups. So let us consider my compound here and very nicely, uh, you notice the difference in the molar mass because the molar mass for the reactant and the product, Z, are all given very nicely to A8 which is the original molar mass for my compound. And when you add 34, which means that I'm effectively adding two OH groups, the molar mass will increase to 322. And very nicely, this will correspond to the molar mass for my compound Z. So what this would mean is the mild oxidation of my alkene will be the only reaction taking place. And I'll be able to form diols here. I just remove the double bond alkene and I add two OH groups to each of this carbon. So this is the expected product that I'll have. And once I have this product Z, then what I can go through is I can consider, okay, how many chiral carbons or how many chiral centers does my Z have? Now this is fairly straightforward. This idea, actually it is linking to intro to organic chem. Looking out for chiral carbon, if I have a pretty big compound, usually what we do is we try to make use of symmetry. All right, I know that a chiral carbon is bonded to four different groups, but when we are looking at questions like this in MCQ, we don't have time to look at each individual carbon and we scrutinize what are the specific four groups that each of these carbon has and decide whether this is chiral or non-chiral. It is too time consuming. Because if you look at compound Z, uh, you have so many carbons to consider. So what we do is we make use of the symmetry because a chiral carbon or a chiral center, it is asymmetrical. And therefore, we 
look at the symmetry of the compound. Now very often such compounds that are given in the question, they are asymmetrical because we notice there's no mirror plane in the compound. So it is asymmetrical. So once we see that the compound is asymmetrical, then we either look out for this type of carbon. Maybe let me highlight this in green. Eh? We look out for this carbon, which is bonded to three groups. Remember there's a hidden hydrogen. This carbon, it is actually a CH. Most of the time, this carbon will be chiral, bonded to four different groups. Or we look out for this type of carbon, carbon bonded to four different groups. Then this carbon will also be chiral. Now we can, in general, ignore the rest of the carbon. We can ignore this carbon. Because this carbon, it is a CH2, it can never be chiral. Chiral carbon must be bonded to four different groups. I can ignore benzene carbon because benzene carbon is sp2 hybridized, only bonded to three groups. It can never be chiral. I can also ignore alkene carbon. Alkene carbon, same thing, it is sp2 hybridized, only attached to three groups. It can never be chiral. So once we have this basis, then we can look through the entire compound. Very quickly, we can identify the chiral carbon. So this carbon will be chiral. We can either circle it or use a asterisk to annotate it. Then for the rest of the carbons that are chiral, I have already indicated here. So I will have all together one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight chiral centers or chiral carbons. So the rest of the carbons, if you run them through, it will be non-chiral. We can now answer the question when we look back at the options A, B, C, D. We already know that Z has eight chiral carbons. So the answer to this question will be option D. All right, so that was the discussion involving question 18. If you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. I'll see you next week.